all I'm here to ask you to do is to ask yourself a question and try to answer it yourself. Do I believe? Or imagine if it's better for you that Jesus is asking you directly, do you believe? Because this issue of believing is the core of our being. Actually, the world calls us believers. And if we don't believe, then the world lies. Because before we can be believers, we must believe. The issue of unbelief is not something we can deal with with a fickle hand. The issue of unbelief is something we must be deliberate about to silence it. Because truth does not work in the life of a saint until he truly believes. Let's start with the scriptures we read one after the other. The first one is John 6, 28-29. Each of these scriptures have a story behind them. The disciples went on to the Lord Jesus Christ and they asked a most important question. The Lord, what shall we do that we may walk the works of God? Maybe they were asking, Lord, shall we fast? Maybe they wanted him to answer, Dear Lord, shall we read the scripture ten times? Maybe they were expecting an answer like, Climb onto the top of Mount Sinai, roll down on your back, and then you'll be able to walk the works of God. They probably were looking for something big, something hideous, something strange to do. But then he gave them a very simple answer. He said, The work of God? You want to do the works of God? Yeah, yeah, Lord. What shall we do? Show us the ropes. He said, The work of God is to believe in Jesus Christ. Simple. Believe in who he has sent. That is the work of God. So which means it may not be as simple as we think it is. He didn't say no Jesus. He said believe him. He didn't say hear about Jesus. He said believe him. He didn't say read about Jesus. He said believe him. For believing Jesus is different from knowing about him. It's different from hearing about him. Can I say something you may not believe me? But it is true. Believing Jesus is different from receiving miracles through him. Because even that one is possible without believing. Believing Jesus is believing him, knowing who he is. And it has some qualities which we may be able to highlight if the Lord gave us space. But the question is, truly, truly, I ask you, truly, truly answer to yourself, do you believe Jesus do you believe him as the son of God? Do you believe that he's the Messiah of mankind? Do you believe that he's coming back again? Do you know the purpose of his return? Because if you truly believe, believe as something that I want all of us to know today. Believe as a way of affecting our character. Knowing may not. Hearing may not. Associating with people who believe may not. But when you believe, something changes. Women who cook believe that when they add this and this and this together, it will produce that. That is why they do so. They will not do what they don't believe in. So belief is always followed by action. Belief changes character. When the mentality of a man is changed by belief, the stance of his steps change. His stride changes. His utterances changes. Belief changes everything about you. So you can't say to me, you believe, if it has not affected your character. He said, the work of Jesus Christ, the work of the Lord, is to believe Jesus. And so if you're there, you're a believer in name, and your life is not affected, maybe you believe a phantom. Maybe you believe a theory. Maybe you believe what people say. But I doubt if you've met him. And I doubt if you believe in it. That's our first scripture. Before we go into the full discussion, let's see the second scripture and look at the story behind it. After the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, he appeared to some of his disciples and uh, they saw him. Then they met my dear brother Thomas. And they said to Thomas, we've seen the Lord. Then you know what Thomas said? He said, I don't believe you guys. 
He stayed with Jesus three years. He had him preaching three years. He saw miracles all through. He was one of the first few disciples. He was brought by Andrew. He saw the Lord. He met the Lord. He's been a series of miracles and miracles. Then the Lord died. He saw the Lord crucified. One of the things the Lord said is, I'll come back again. And those who saw him said unto Thomas, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. He said, unless I see the wound on his head and side, and unless I put my finger into the hole in his hand, I will not believe. I don't know how Jesus had, but it's Jesus. For Jesus was not physically present when he said what he said. And then, after a while, eight days later, his disciples were together inside in a place, and Jesus came. He didn't have to open the door. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He came in without the door opening. It's a miracle. Then he looked around them and he said, Peace be unto you. Thomas saw the Lord. Then he looked, Jesus looked at him straight, like he will look at you in your areas of unbelief. Like he will stare us face to face and say, Hey, I told you that. Like when we miss some miracles that should be us, when we miss them because of unbelief, or because of unbelief, and we meet with Jesus, he will look at you and say, It was your error. I did that for you. You couldn't claim it because you can't believe. He looked at Thomas and he said, Thomas, touch my hand. You want to see the wound to my side? You want proof of my being? You want me to prove to you that I'm alive? When, Jesus, when Thomas saw, he said, my Lord and my King. Jesus did not let him go scot-free. He pushed the truth like he's pushing the truth with us today. He said, oh, now that you've seen the wound, now that you've seen what you wanted to see, you believe? You are not as blessed as some people. They are the people who have not seen, yet they believe. There's something contrary to our system of thinking here. You know, you've had it, I've had it. It's something banded everywhere that seeing is believing. If you believe seeing is believing, you can be a good Christian. Thomas here believed that seeing is believing. And that's why he said, until I see, I won't believe. Jesus is saying to him, that's your theory, that's your principle, that's your whatever dogma, whatever it is you call it, that's your mantra, it's wrong. Seeing is believing, it's wrong. He said, blessed are those who having not seen, believe. I want to be one of those ones who having not seen yet believe. There's a guarantee that you who believe having not seen, I can guarantee you will see. Because actually, it is believing that brings true sight. Ability to really, really see comes from believing. That's the story of our second scripture. I don't want to be a Thomas, but sometimes I find myself playing Thomas. When the promises are large, I wonder, can God do it? But then I quickly say, Father, help me chase away unbelief. I believe him at his word, and then I see the proof. I don't wait for the proof to believe, for by then it might be too late. Now we go to our third scripture, Luke chapter 1, verse 45. When Elizabeth was talking to Mary, the mother of Jesus, he said, Blessed is she who believe, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. You know, she went to visit Elizabeth, she got into the house of Elizabeth, and Elizabeth said, Hey, the moment you came in, the baby in my womb jumped up. There was an agreement within her, the pregnancy of John the Baptist, the little fetus, and that of Jesus. John the Baptist as a fetus recognized Jesus as a fetus and bowed in the womb for my Lord and my King. The mother felt it. The mother said, yeah, yeah, there's an agreement here. Whatever you believe that has been promised, you will be fulfilled. I think there's a principle there we need to look at. Whatever you believe as a promise will be what? Will be fulfilled. That is what she said unto her. Let me tell you the full story. Because there's a story we can learn from. From they said, Mary said, tell her. You know, an angel came, Angel Gabriel, but he went to two houses, if you remember the story. He didn't go to the house of Mary alone. He went to two houses. He went first to, the, to Zechariah when he was in the temple. And when he got to Zechariah, Zechariah was uh, uh, giving, putting incense in the most holy place. He was looking at the mercy seat. He was looking at the figure of Angel Gabriel. And the other angel, these are the angels of covering. He was looking at the figure in the image. But then the real angel, whose image he was pouring incense onto, 
appeared. Is it not like us who believe more in the image than the reality of the truth? It's called religion. He was there pouring incense, doing all the rituals. He was used to the rituals. He's been doing the rituals for many years. But then when the reality of the rituals came upon him, he couldn't believe. And the angel said to him, you're going to have a baby boy? He's going to be called John the Baptist? You know what he said? He said, this can be. This can be. How can this be? So you know what the angel did? The angel knows something about unbelief. Whoever has unbelief will bring forth unbelieving utterances, and his unbelieving utterances will disturb the reality of the truth. I'll go through this again. Once there's unbelieving, unbelief in your heart, only unbelieving utterances will come forth. And unbelieving utterances are powerful. They disturb the fulfillment of the truth. So the angel said, <laughs> Zachariah, if I allow you to continue to talk this, your talk, you will be speaking unbelief, and it will be hard for the truth to be fulfilled. Therefore, we shall keep you mute. You won't be able to talk until this is fulfilled. And I'm praying for you that maybe the Lord should keep some of us mute so that our unbelieving utterances will not be disturbances to the truth that's about to be fulfilled in our lives. So the man was kept silent. And it was happening. He could have spoken against the pregnancy. You know, when the woman came to him, his wife, who is so advanced in age, if she comes to him in his unbelieving state and says to him, Zachariah, darling, I think I'm pregnant, he would have said, it can't be pregnancy. Then he just stopped that by enabling him to be mute. He couldn't say so. When the pregnancy was coming up, probably the woman was sick or ill, and she said, oh, the baby will come down. You are too old to carry it. These are the things he would have said. And so the angel knew, knowing humanity, knowing that once you are going to believe on the inside of you, you're going to say strange things that will stop the uh, uh, truth from being fulfilled, kept him mute. You couldn't say jack until it was fulfilled. May God do it to you. Amen. If there is unbelief in your heart, may you be kept silent. Amen. May the Lord disenable your ability to speak in your unbelief. Amen. May only words of truth come forth from you. It's better for a Christian to repeat the truth even when you have doubts than to speak your doubts. Mm. I have learned it. I'll keep on repeating the truth. I keep on repeating the truth. I will disallow the doubt on the inside of me to have verbs with which to express itself. Until you do that, you may live a life that will be lacking in miracles. For miracles come as a promised first and then your belief catalyzes them into reality. Are we still listening to me? Are we listening to me? Yes. But when the angel got to the house of Mary, he didn't have to keep her quiet, did he? She was not deaf, she was not dumb. She was able to speak because the angel knew there was no belief on the inside of her. She was full of faith. He said to her, you're going to give back to a baby boy. Actually, what he promised Mary was greater than what he promised Zachariah. Zachariah, your wife is old. What is wrong with Zachariah? If I get to heaven, I will ask him. Did he not eat, read about Sarah? His wife was not as old as Sarah. And this is a priest. He read, but he only read. He didn't believe what he read. So what God was doing to Zachariah has been done and done and done and done in times past. As a priest, he read the story of Abraham. And God is only saying, I'm going to repeat in a minuscule level what I did with Abraham. He couldn't believe it. I don't know why he couldn't believe it, so he had to be kept short. But what this woman is being promised is stranger. You're going to give back to a baby boy, and you're still going to be a virgin when you are pregnant. Who has had that before? When he told her, he, she said to him, I've never known a man. Where will the baby come from? He said, don't worry, your pregnancy intact, your virginity intact. How can that get into the skull of a man? It's so strange. Yet you know what this handmaiden of the Lord said. He said, be to me according to his will. She did not doubt it. She embraced it. It's strange. It's great. It's beyond my understanding. It's overwhelming. But if the Lord says so, I believe. That is a believer. And she believed. So she didn't have, he didn't have to do anything to avoke her God. She could talk. Because what would she say? She only say words of faith. The Lord has promised me. And now she's getting to the house of uh, Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is saying to her, what the Lord has promised you will come to pass. I said to someone listening to me in there, what the Lord has promised you 
will come to pass. Amen. It will come to pass. Amen. And even if there's unbelief in your heart, you walk the walk of disenabling your unbelief from getting verbs. Don't give it words. When doubt comes, don't give it words. If there's nothing to say, keep on repeating that promise. God said so. God said so. And it will come to pass. Amen. Hey, see what happened to Mary. She gave back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And here today, she's the mother of the Lord. Simply because she believed. So my question again to you, friends, is do you believe? And may I say something here that you may have to forgive me for. If you have believed more, your life will be better. The level of life and the expression of God's grace you have in your life presently is simply because of the level of your belief. There are more promises than what you've seen fulfilled. The love of God is greater than the ocean in which you swim in. He is more loving, he is more gracious, he is more merciful than we are experiencing. And the article that is disturbing us is unbelief. So here we are. Blessed is he that believe, having not seen, that those who wait on sin before believing. I want to be of that first set who just believe because God says so. How can you improve your belief? Simple. Doubt will always come. We are human. All of us, even the best of us, will have seasons of doubt. Why? Simply because the promises of God are too great. His own thinking is too high for us. So when he speaks, doubt rises. The enemy is active, bringing articles of doubt. Please listen to me. Don't ever give those doubting issues in your mind. Don't ever give your inner unbelief utterance. Don't say it. Just keep quiet. What shall you say, therefore? Repeat what the Lord has promised, even in spite of your unbelief. And I promise you, having not seen, you will see because you believe. May God bless you.